Candidates are expected to have a thorough understanding of the syllabus details outlined in the accompanying figure. Mutual induction. As the electromagnet is switched on, an EMF is induced in the second solenoid, but only for a momentary pulse. This effect is equivalent to pushing a magnet toward the second solenoid very fast. With a steady current through the electric, no EMF is induced in the second solenoid because the magnetic field is not changing. As the electromagnet is switched off, an EMF is induced in the opposite direction in the second solenoid, but only for a momentary pulse. This effect is equivalent to pulling a magnet away from the second solenoid very fast. When an alternating power supply is used instead of the DC power supply, an alternating current flows through an electromagnet, creating an alternating magnetic field around it. This alternating magnetic field interacts with second solenoid, inducing an alternating EMF in it. The induced EMF in the second solenoid can be increased by increasing the number of turns on the secondary solenoid. Using an iron core in the electromagnet that goes right through the secondary solenoid. This principle is applied in transformers, where the mutual inductance between two coils allows for the efficient transfer of electrical energy between them. A simple transformer. A transformer is an electrical device that can be used to increase or decrease the voltage of an AC current. It works by mutual induction. It has four main components. The AC input power supply. Primary coil. Iron core. And secondary coil. Iron is used because it is soft magnetic material that is easily magnetized and demagnetized. When an alternating current flows through the primary coil, creating and changing magnetic field around it. The iron core is easily magnetized so the changing magnetic field passes through it to the secondary coil. This changing magnetic field interacts with the secondary coil, inducing an alternating voltage, or EMF, in the secondary coil that has same frequency as the input alternating voltage. If the secondary coil is part of a complete circuit, it will cause an alternating current to flow. Transformers will not work with DC, because it creates a steady magnetic field that does not interact with the coil and induce an EMF. There are two types of transformers as the step-up and step-down transformers. Step-up transformer. It increases the voltage of an input power supply, meaning V, P, is less than V, S, and the number of turns on the primary coil is less than the number of turns on the secondary coil. Step-down transformer. It decreases the voltage of an input power supply, meaning V, P, is more than V, S, and the number of turns on the primary coil is more than the number of turns on the secondary coil. Assuming all magnetic field lines pass through both coils, and there is no energy loss due to heating effects, the following equations apply. Where V, P, is the voltage in the primary coil. V, S, is the voltage in the secondary coil. N, P, is the number of turns on the primary coil. NS is the number of turns on the secondary coil. The output power will be the same as the input power of supply. Where V, P, is the voltage in the primary coil. I, P, is the current in the primary coil. V, S, is the voltage in the secondary coil. I, S, is the current in the secondary coil. National grid are networks of wires and cables that carry electrical energy from power stations to consumers such factories and homes. However, currents in long wires can lose lots of energy in the form of heat. The larger the current, the greater the amount of energy lost. If the current in the wires is kept to a minimum, the heat losses can be reduced. Transformers help us do this. Transformers are used in national grids so that the electricity is transmitted as low currents and at high voltages. Typically, a large power station produces a current of 20,000 amperes at a voltage of 33,000 volts. 
The high current is fed to a step-up transformer, which greatly decreases the size of the currents and increase the size of the voltages. These step-up transformers increase the voltage of the electricity to approximately 400,000 volts. High voltages like these can be extremely dangerous, so the cables are supported high above the ground on pylons. As the cables enter town and cities they are buried underground. Close to where the electrical energy is needed, the electricity is sent through a step-down transformer that decreases the voltage to approximately 230 volts, while at the same time increasing the current. High Voltage Transmission When electricity is transmitted over large distances, the current in the wires heats them, resulting in energy loss. To minimize this loss, we use high voltage transmission lines. By using a transformer to increase the voltage, the current is reduced. This means we can use thinner, lighter, and cheaper cables to transmit the same amount of power, for example, aluminum cable. Alternating current is used for the transmission, because alternating current can be easily stepped up and down in voltage using transformers. This means that transformers only work with AC. Transformers will not work with DC. The calculation demonstrates why less power is lost from a cable if power is transmitted through it at high voltage. The first circuit, the power input is 2000 watts, 200 volts and cable resistance of 2 ohms. A current flows through the cable can be calculated by power equals current times voltage. To substitute the power is 2000 and voltage is 200. The results of current is 10 amperes. When a current flows through a resistance, it has a heating effect, so power is wasted. The power loss can be calculated by power equals current squared times resistance. To substitute current is 10 and resistance is 2. The results of power loss is 200 watts. The second circuit increases in the voltage from 200 to 2000 volts, while the power and resistance of the cable remain the same. A current flows through the cable reduces to 1 ampere. The power loss in the cable becomes 2 watts. These calculations show the power losses in a cable when the same amount of power is sent at high voltage is less than the low voltage. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would be grateful if you would subscribe, share, like and leave a positive comment. Your support will encourage me to create more content. Thank you.